Nora. Hi. Thanks for talking to us today, Michelle Rocks. Thanks for coming over. Thank you for having us in your really funky, cool apartment. It's really cool. She's funky. There's a lot of cool stuff in here. Thank you. You could tell you're an art art person. Yeah, hard to forget. It's mm-hmm. cool. So I saw you last time at your show at the Phi Center. Is it said Phi or is it Phi? I don't know. But I, I think I see in French people say centre phi, but in English people say phi. Phi because it's it's a isn't it a Greek letter? Oh phi? I guess so. That makes sense. I'm not sure. That was a fun show though, that was really cool. That was a mm-hmm. great, great show. I Thank really you. enjoyed that show. It was full of like a lot of surprises too. You had special guests. I had surprises and special guests and impulsive call ups onto the stage and things. Oh wow. Yeah, that that was fun, like for those who weren't there. I saw my friend Johnny Griffin from John Jacob Magistrate in the audience during one of the songs. Oh. And I thought, he's here, okay. And then I knew my friend Oren, Oscar Lewis, an incredible artist between Toronto, Montreal and Brooklyn. Um, he was there too. And we've been writing songs together this summer. Okay. And Oscar Lewis told me that I should play one of the songs that we wrote during the show. Okay, that was the song that I'd never heard before. Close my mind, yes. And then you had everyone, and we were all singing along <gasps> with you. Happy now. That wow. was beautiful. What, that, I, I, I wish I recorded that song because I didn't. But We're I was, recording it now. It's wow. okay. Oh, you are? Oh, yeah, we yeah. are. But it was super beautiful. Like, I saw Johnny and I knew uh, Oscar Lewis was there. So I just was like, Johnny, are you here? And he came up on the stage and then, hey, are you here, Warren? And he came up on the stage and then we just like had this beautiful moment. I never, I didn't think about it in advance. I was oh. going to play the song myself, but then oh. I saw them there and I figured it'd be much, much sweeter if we shared that together. Wow. After the summer we had writing together. It was a real moment, that song, and the way they, it was like so spontaneous, but mm-hmm. so, like, you pulled it off, luckily, <laughs> but, yeah, like, I don't know, that was, I've seen, I mean, you know, I've seen a lot of your shows, it's yes. getting weird, <laughs> but... No, it's okay, it's second mom. Aw. Third mom. People are like, are you related to Hanora? And I'm like, no. Honorary auntie. <laughs> I'm like that crazy aunt that no one talks about. No, I love it. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, that song, Happy Now? Blows my mind. It blows my mind. Oh, because you were—we were all singing. Are you happy, happy now? now? Yeah. Happy now. So you wrote it with other. So now you're you're collaborating. Yes. Scary oh. new feeling, but very very fun. But it worked. Yeah, it did work. They're uh, they're incredibly talented songwriters. Those two um, lyrics, arranging, melody, all of it. So we actually wrote that in this apartment. No way. On that piano, it's wow. my uh, the divorce piano that I got when my parents split up. <laughs> In 2004. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, it worked out. Yeah. You can't even get new plugs for it anymore. That's how out of date it is. But we had it plugged in and it was just sitting right across here where we're at. And it was 2.30 in the morning. Ooh. And I had folks here. We were just jamming all night. And one of my good friends, Monse, who's done the cover art for all my oh, stuff. Yeah. And, she, and your video for... Um, the Drudge. The Drudge yes, video. She, she really and Brittany cool. Kenda directed yes. that. So she was just leaving my place. And then my friend... So Oscar Lewis was playing these chords. And I just started going... Na, 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 na. And the whole song just kind of unfolded from there. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. It was like, I, there's you can't phrase that. That's like this moment where just everything fits in and works out. And yes. It's, what's the word for that? Um, synchronicity or something. There's like... Kismet? It's something. Just kismet yeah, just the, the, the moment is right and you can't recreate exactly the right conditions. Um, for that wow. to happen, but I felt so like open, and I was having a nice time with my friends. Felt safe, felt right, free, right. and this yeah. is the best conditions. It's like breeding in the bright environment. Correct, right, right environment. I shouldn't say breeding, but or kind of or growing, 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 like or that. whatnot. Yeah, oh my God, it's like a hot house. And you're, oh, you're kidding, hey, buddy. Hello. Hi. Oh. Sorry, I know. I'll be quiet. No, Sorry. he's curious. He's so curious. That's cool. He's gonna yeah. watch you the rest of the yes, afternoon, though. It's me. So it's her cat you can't see. Is it a boy? Ziggy, he's my boy. Ziggy. Hello. Hello, Ziggy. My bunny. Okay. So yeah, it's been a fun summer of writing new songs with uh, different people. And um, I'm always blown away by how generous folks are in, in these sessions with the ideas that they share. And the talent people have in Montreal is just astounding. Astounding. I think the Montreal music scene is getting a little more... What's the right word now? It's it's kind of blooming a little bit. I'm finding so many wonderful Montreal artists. I, I saw Dominique Fizeme also recently. Did you go to that show? The symphony at, one or Maison Symphonique? No, the one at um, 
Théâtre du Nouveau Monde. Nouveau Monde. I didn't make it with the looping, right? Oh. I didn't, couldn't make it that night. That was a great it show. It was cool. That was a good show. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Um, and I had my dad on stage too. Okay. Yeah. So I didn't even know, like, I mean, how would I know? But, but yeah. you, now that you know that it's him though, you can see it, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. I'm just him with hair. Yeah. So I was, it was, I, I was taking photos at that show. So I was in the front and I was like shoving people as I do when I'm trying to, you know, weasel in. And I noticed him cause he was this tall guy and whatnot. And I was, I had no idea that was your dad. So your dad's a drummer? He's a drummer, um, oh. but he loves guitars. He's been playing a lot of guitar. Oh. And when I was at his place a few months ago, he showed me a new guitar that he got. And I just said, you should you should play on my show. You should just come to my show and play on Long Road, the song Long Road. So did you practice? Oh. Well, so what <laughs> happened was every, every few months, like it slipped my mind. Oh. And then he would text me like, Liz, am I still playing at your show? And I'd go like, Oh yeah, 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 you're still playing oh, at the show. Okay. And then a few days before he came by here, I made him oh. some pasta and then we practiced the song. He was prepared oh, wow. and then he became a rock star at the show itself. People were chanting his like name. Everybody Patrick. knew him. Yeah, everybody Patrick. knew him. Like, Nobody knew. <laughs> who is this guy? Where did he come from? I've never seen him before. I think it's just exciting to change the rhythm of a show, especially when it's a parent or a family member. There's mm-hmm. something kind of sweet about that. Your mom wasn't there that one time and, and everyone's like, where's her mom? Where's Linda? Where's Linda? Yeah, she comes to every show. I know. Yeah, That's what I'm saying. Foster mom. Um, okay. oh, foster mom. <laughs> foster mom. Um, that was a great show. Yeah. That was a different kind of show. Yeah, different. And I had this the secret the whole oh. time, right? I had oh. a secret that I was holding on to until the encore when okay. we shared that new song, Time Waits for No Woman. Oh, yeah. And then I announced to the audience, I have some postcards that are pre-marked right, to right. Parliament. So yes. if anyone feels like writing ceasefire and mailing it to JT, we got a stack. But if you're following Han- Hanora on Instagram, like that's pretty much all you've been talking <laughs> about lately is always peace yeah. in the Middle East. Thank I'm you. Sh- I'm with you on that Absolutely, one. Absolutely, yeah. I told you my, my mother was born in Palestine yeah. and my grandmother and we escaped. Like here, I mean, I'm not going to get super political, but the reason why we came to Canada and I love Canada, we came in 1967. Right after I was born, there was the Six Day War. And we got out. We're like, we got to get out of here. And we came to Canada in 67. Wow. Well, 68, but the, the war happened in 67. Yeah. But it was like sign of the time. It's time to move it on. It was time that we, yeah. we, we didn't feel safe. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how it happened. I just, one of my friends, Tina, Big Daddy Queen Power, was posting so much about it on her stories every day. And at first I was like, fell into this trap of, well, I don't know enough about the history. I don't know enough. Yeah. And then the more I saw, the more I was like, okay, I don't need to have a degree in, in Middle Eastern no, policy to no. understand that like bombing children is wrong. So I made a, like 400 of those postcards. And now other musicians are having people sign them at their shows. Yeah. And it's free to send me out to Parliament. Did you just come up with that idea? Yes. A friend of mine sent oh. me a link of like how to send, oh. how to, where to email your local representative. Right, right. And I saw a little footnote on the government's website saying it is free. Like you can send mail to yes. Parliament without post. Yeah, it's free. Yeah, and I thought, oh my gosh, I had this visual of bags and bags and bags of mail on Justin Trudeau's desk. It's like that, that Christmas movie when, when they don't believe in Santa Claus yeah. and then gets all that mail. Is it a Miracle on 34th Street? Yes, yeah. So similar vibe. I yeah, thought, yeah. like, let's give some, some mail. Let's send some mail. So right now, I think thus far there are 700 cards that have been mailed out. My friend Tina made uh, several hundred more other musicians around the city are making hundreds of them and having fans sign them at shows so it's really taking off as this initiative where folks are gathering in physical space get them to write ceasefire get them to sign their name and send mail for free so you're already running out of postcards oh yeah we had to we cleared out the the neighborhood and we had to order some in through a local paper shop oh wow Um, we got 1500 more um i'm hoping to get i have labels printed out with the address there's somewhere in here so i'm hoping to do 4000 and then just keep doing it until I drop or run out of money, I guess. Oh. We need yeah. to get you some supplies, girl. Yeah. Send her some supplies. So it was a really cool show. It was great to see people get involved in that way, gather in the lobby for like an hour, an hour and a half after I, the show. I filled out, like I took a big stack. Yes. I have really bad handwriting. Okay. But I was it the, green? Did you do green? No, I did the orange marker. Orange, that was you. I took a big stack and I just did them quick, 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 quick. But um, everybody does want peace. I mean, nobody wants to get... At this point where things are just, it's wrong on yeah, so many levels. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're Jewish or Arabic or Armenian or it, 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 so many different cultures live in Israel. Yeah, in that land. 
Yeah. And the thing is, I think one of the main reasons I'm seeing so many people in the West wake up to, to this and call it what it is, is because our Jewish peers didn't let us forget what genocide looked like. Right. So kind of people that are sheltered from the realities of, of um, the wars going on owe a great debt to our Jewish peers for letting us know what it looked like. And I don't think that most Jewish people want this to be happening. I think it's just like a few Zionist, you know, believers and all that. You know, I've, I've seen some things like some some scary things coming out of people's mouths on you know in different directions but i think in general most people that are reasonable want peace. I, it's a lot of fear-based things and misinformed people yeah that's why i don't get political online because i don't want people after me yeah, that's why i just say ceasefire can we agree to yeah, stop that's it like tearing up all the trees and bombing schools like it's we don't need that Look, don't need it as i said my my family speaks hebrew and arabic and yeah. turkish and armenian and greek right? and english and french and like english. we came to canada we had they had, my parents had to learn french and okay we'll learn french sure like there was no issue like that's great now i know another language yeah. why my family know? too when they came from italy yeah on my mom's side yeah same thing my grandfather did a degree in french in his 60s wow he became a deacon and and then was doing like free therapy in his community for 25 years wow. before his death after working here for however many decades. Yeah. yeah. My mom took French, I remember, oh. with her little exercise books. When we, you know, when we were kids, like we were doing our homework and she was doing her French homework. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the new music. And now, Missy, you're going to L.A., I heard. Yes, I have a show at Gold Diggers in Hollywood. Okay. On Sunset, I think, on That's the 29th. Right, really like Hollywood. It's Hollywood. <laughs> I'm kind of excited. On the 29th of November, Gold okay. Diggers, and it's through Pop Montreal and SoCan. Very exciting. Oh. Oh, very cool. Yeah, very we're staying cool. at the SoCan house out there in LA, and um, it'll be a good time. We're going to share some of the new tunes, stay there for a week, get a little bit of sun. Nice. You're not going with your full band? We're going to go as a trio. We're going to go as a trio. We'll still have a full show, though. It'll be great. Okay. Who are you bringing with you? Annabelle and Felix. Okay. So keys and guitar, and we'll have some, some tracks to fill up the sound a little bit as well. Okay, cool. Yeah. And they'll be singing. I love singing. I love singers, and I love singing. It'll nice. Be great. Yeah. A a anyone else coming with you from Montreal or no? My manager, Joey. Um, okay. He kind of keeps it all together, so we need him. Speaking of, of manager and whatnot, you know what? Do you don't I, Okay, I'm going to just make a, a comment, but you, we can edit if you like. You don't have a lot of merch on your table. I, no one, I don't see Hanora t shirt. Did you? I sold it all. You yeah. sold it all? Yeah, I have to make more. That's good, though. That's then. great. Okay, yeah. then that's great. Do you yeah. have t shirts? I'm out, so we were ordering another batch. Okay, because yeah. I didn't see any at the Phi Center show. I sold the last ones um, in northern Quebec like oh, a week prior to the true. show. that's true, you were in Quebec. I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah. How are those shows? F fun. Like, yeah. interesting. The weather is bonkers. It's cold? Very cold. Uh -huh. Snowy, but snowy and then not cold and then really like cold. Like Shibugamu. You went to Shibugamu. I did. Like, I that's did. a real place. That's a real place that I went to, yeah. Do you remember when you used to be like, where are you from? Shibugamu. <laughs> like Timbuktu it's a place okay. it's a real place yeah I went there I actually played a show there and the great thing is that there's a lot of arts funding in Quebec yes even in very small towns and everyone shows up so you're like the event of the night in that yes town. I've noticed I don't know I don't know I've been to so many shows but here's what I don't get when or I do get this is what I notice when I go to any show regardless if it's like a heavy metal show or a jazz show or whatnot 90% of the crowd is francophone Francophone and, and white. In Montreal? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I would love to talk about that if I could. Great. I have something to say about this. Tell me, because I, I noticed it and I, yeah, let it go. Yeah. So. so for a while, the fact that I, like, I live in Montreal, my booking agent is here, so mm -hmm. I get a lot of regional Quebec gigs. So outside of Montreal and Quebec City, a lot of my shows are primarily populated by, like, an older white crowd and for a long time I was so confused by this and okay. felt kind of odd yeah. because before I signed a record deal or anything my my audience was much more mixed okay especially in Montreal and so I was having an identity crisis you know as she <laughs> well, Anglophone, francophone right, black right. Yeah, white, yeah, whatever yeah. you know is it soul is it folk okay. whatever all these things and then I at the Montreal show I realized what a gift that is because I looked in the mm. audience and it was a range of people from all different backgrounds all ages yeah languages yeah and when i saw that i could use that to get people to do something mm -hmm. like via those postcards right. i was like girl this is a blessing okay you know so yeah. it's, i think it's a good thing that i can connect with people that come from a totally different background from me yeah i think that's a good sign no that is a good sign yeah. i'm just surprised you know where i noticed that and ironically and i wrote it in my review the first time i saw you at pop fest 
with Mavis Staples. Mavis. Was that like three or four years ago? 2019. Four years. Holy cow. I know. And in that review, I wrote that, okay, this is going to sound, I, I mean, I said what I said, what I said mm-hmm. that that show where it was Mavis Staples, you and Chlorelle, and I, I looked around and like the entire audience was white and elderly. Mm-hmm. And I said, I thought I was at like a, a folk festival in Vermont. Like it was, so, <laughs> it was like this, like arts and crafts fair in Vermont. Like everybody mm-hmm. was very bohemian. Like, you know exactly what I'm talking Hippie-ish, about. Yeah. Very beatnik. And like everyone was over 50 for sure. Mm-hmm. And that was at the Mavis Staples. And I'm like, Mavis Staples is like a gospel singer. Yeah. And I was like, everyone's white here. I don't get it. No. Yeah. Like, I think it's I'm not even, I was like the, the least white person there and I'm not, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Like sometimes. Anyway. Yeah, I've, I have misgivings about that. It's a little strange. I don't know. It is what it is. It is what it is. I think yeah. that if people are getting together to appreciate music, that's a positive thing. And there, there's certainly there's something to be said for marketing and audience, gentrification, commodification. Or is it that also people, not like your tickets are like thousands of dollars, but oh is it a question if people don't want to pay for tickets or don't, don't have the money? I'm not sure. I don't know. At your last show, I had a, I'm, I spoke with a very nice older lady, like older, like my age probably, and she never heard of you. Uh, why did she Blue come? eyes, gray hair, or no, grayish blonde? No, I don't remember now. We're friends on Instagram. I'll, I'll, but the point was, she she had she went online and she bought a bunch of tickets for the Phi Center. And it was like this deal where, I don't know, you, you get like a package of like five shows or three shows. So she just bought a bunch of tickets. And then this was one of them. And she just came and she's like, and after this, because I told her, oh, have you heard of Menora? Have you heard of uh, Witch Prophet? She's like, no. I'm like, oh, you're going to like it. You're going to like it. And then at the end of the show, she was like, I'm so glad I came. You know? That's beautiful. I asked her and she's like, I'm so glad I came. And I'm like, yeah. She really enjoyed it. Really she came well. alone too because... Her friend couldn't make it, but she still came by herself. But you know, that like that's so cool. Like yeah. I'm in my head thinking about all the nonsense that I'm worried about. But then at the end of the day, people are gathering in a room because they want to have an experience with you, and it's just so nice to hear that that you had a good time. I like talking to people in the crowd and seeing like what their deal is too. You know, like, yeah. do you know the artist or whatnot? And sometimes they don't. Mm-hmm. There are people there that I didn't recognize singing my songs. One person in particular, brunette, in uh, further um, back a little bit, a brunette was singing along to everything. And I was like, who oh. are you? We've never met. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, wow. Well. I'm a real artist, I guess. It's like You're a, on the radio, this too. Is a real, <laughs> this is well, a real thing. CBC plays you. Yeah, they do. That's crazy. Is it radio, though? Is that where it, I mean... I don't know. I don't uh, know either. I I pay other people to worry about that because I, I think if I if I think too much about all that, I get obsessive and get into this weird, like, lacking mindset. Yeah. And then start to get jealous and envious of other yeah, people and feel like yeah. I'm not doing things Throws right. And then, you off your game. Yeah, and then I'm making no. weird decisions from a not-thought-out no. place. So I just don't think about that anymore and let other people worry. Yeah. No, I get it. It's like when you're comparing yourself to other people and then you put this weird pressure on yourself. And then, like, are you creating to mm. be yourself or are you creating to fit into... Yeah. An imagined thing yeah. that nobody actually asked from you. Right. No, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or just imagine what other people want. Well, once you lose your authenticity, forget it. No. Then you're, you're, you're gone. Pooched. So there's so three new songs on the uh, EP. Like and two and a half, kind of. Because oh, one is alive. Yes. It's a sad song. Yeah. For your... <sighs> My grandfather. Yeah. That's that sound. That's a good song when you sing it live because people will join in as well. It just hurts so much to sing. That one's a hard one to sing. I miss him every day. I know. Yeah. You didn't sing it at your last show, and I was relieved. You know what I mean? Like, no, but it's, like, it's heavy. And I, 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 yeah, I was glad you didn't sing it for because I had, I told you I just lost my mom. So I'm like, oh, I hope she doesn't sing that song. <laughs> but. Mercy. But sometimes you do want a song that makes you cry, too. Time and place, for sure. But I really like Time Waits for No Woman. I'm obsessed with that song. When I first heard it, I'm like, well, this song needs to be in a film soundtrack. Is that what's going to happen? Like, you're going to go to Hollywood, and you're going to get that song in a, in a, in a movie. Is you think that so? Could, I would put that song in a movie, for sure. Okay. 
But I need the right movie. You need the right movie. So like, like twenty something protagonist is discovering that she doesn't have to have it all figured out yet, and instead of she but divorces her husband and then like, goes even, to Paris or something. No, no, but not even a twenty something. Like I'm a fifty something year old woman, and that song means a lot to me. I like wrote, legit means a lot to that me. That song I wrote this now because I know that I'm gonna need it down the line. Oh, yeah. Okay. You're like banking it. Oh yeah, I wrote it at 25. I'm 29 now. 30 is staring, is staring me down. It's around the corner, and I, I think that I've noticed that my best songs are the ones that gain meaning over time, and this is one of them. This is one. Of them. Yeah. I wrote it about in music industry career anxiety, I, but I, I mean, remember when yeah you were the I was it la yes last year I spoke we spoke and you were just releasing Perennial. Mm -hmm. You just went to On Soul Records. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. And you're all happy with the new Very. the new stuff, the, yeah. the new changes and all that. Yes, and now, um, I've been through a lot of changes since then too. I mean, in a very short time, my band formation is different than yeah. the last full band show you've probably seen. Well, I've noticed remember. your guitar is, is different. And... Voila. Sorry? Voila. Yeah. So I've been through a lot of changes myself in the last little while, and people that were in my life are not in my life anymore. and. It's funny to feel like you're starting over when you thought you had everything figured out. No one has anything figured out ever. ever. I know. know, and this song kind of reminds me of that. Like, it's okay mm. to be almost 30 and single or, like, not in the same relationship you were in and start over in that regard. You know, mm. I had these things in my head of what I was going to do, but when real life brought me a different reality, I had the choice to live in denial and stay in a relationship that wasn't working, for example, or live in reality and make a change and face the fear of starting over. And that line of like, 25 years old, you know, you're 25 now, you gotta have it all figured out. But why do we do that? Why do we put know. these like age limits and restrictions on, on women? I mean, not just, well, yeah, women especially. I see it a lot. Like, on expiry women. date. I always say that I have an expiry life. date Shelf for life. sure. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. Like there's a, like a date, we all have these tattoo dates behind our head and like when we're supposed to just pack it in. Yeah, like at, at 30, you're supposed to just die, please, so that nobody can look at you. I, I hate that. It's so, so, so dumb. I'm a better vocalist and performer and songwriter now than I was five years ago. Yeah. Let, let me wow you with my new skills. <laughs> well, it, it's you have the experience. With experience comes confidence mm -hmm. and, and growth. That's true. You're not, you're not going to be singing about the same songs. They, you know, you're not going to have the same life issues and and things to deal with that you had 10 years ago. You're always going to have more and more difficult. Thank goodness. Well, yeah, exactly. And like, I mean, look back at the stuff you worried about 10 years ago. Now you're laughing at that stuff. I don't even remember. <laughs> yeah, like exactly. Things that we thought were so scary, right? Yeah. Well, it's growth and progress and all that stuff. But, um, yeah, we're just, we're having a human experience and I suppose, okay. So uh, yesterday I was talking to a lady at yoga and she told me she became a yoga instructor in her 70s you know what i'm saying like these people inspired me and she was great like because i was cool. wearing my wristband I, I still went to yoga yesterday even though my wrist was hurting me i'm like i'm just gonna go and the lady next to me started talking to me and, she, and i were talking i don't know we women in the you'll see we just started talking about like being in your 50s and and stuff and uh, oh i know why because the another woman told me oh i saw your pictures on instagram i really like them and i said oh thanks and I said, I just started taking photos in my 50s, but I'm like amateur or whatever. And she's like, no, no, no. She says, I became a yoga teacher in my, my 70s. So we're all talking about getting older and just wanting to keep learning. Yeah, life, it's not over till it's over. But what's wrong with that? Nothing. I know. It's but amazing. We're but made we to feel, yeah. Superstitions about age yeah. and doing stuff. Like if you're 29 and in a bad relationship, you should stay in that relationship forever because <laughs> you're old. Because you're old. <laughs> like... When I think of my thought process at that time, I want to shake that girl. So, what else you got? <laughs> so, you're going to go to L.A., mm -hmm. come back, spend your holidays with your family. Exactly. You know me. Right. And um, working on some songs. That song blows my mind. We're, gonna re we're recording that now. I love that song. Mm -hmm. I was like, hey, wait a minute. I don't know this song. I've never heard this song. And then those two other musicians that got up with you, I didn't know who they were. Oh my gosh. Okay, Oscar Lewis, incredible songwriter. Amazing. I love this dude so much. And Johnny, Johnny's voice, I mean, you heard him when he sang that, blows my mind part, out of control. That was a real moment. Yeah. Like, 
I think of all your shows, like, that one was, like, very surprising to me. That was the like, goal. Yeah, I didn't know what to expect. Like, not that I didn't know what to expect, but it was not what I expected. I'm glad because I thought about it. When you were messaging me about coming to the show, I'm like, I can't oh, no. I can't do the same show again. This I hid. Like I was the third or fourth time you've seen the same show. No, but you didn't see me, though, did you? No, I didn't, but I knew I when you messaged me, so I knew you were coming. Oh, okay. And I was like, okay, well, if I do the same show... It's just going to be, you're just comparing it to the last iteration of the same thing. So what can I do? How can I inject some fun into this? Yeah. New song? Okay, bring my dad on stage. Okay, put more flowers on the stage. A lot more flowers on the stage. And then that little special surprise moment. Yeah. I'm bringing my friends up. That was fun. I'm yeah. glad it was surprising. That was, so mm. this winter, um, I'm slowing it down even more oh. to give these songs that I've been writing time to become what they need to become. Mm, to ferment. Correct. Mm. And demo them properly, give them time and space, record them. There's an, like an album, an album is oh, great. very slowly brewing. Okay. brewing, but I'm going to give it the time that it needs yeah, rather good. than rush. Yeah. Yeah. I well, feel you, really good about it too. If you have the time and if you could afford to really, I'm taking you know, the time. Yeah, great. I'll worry about affording later. <laughs> well, now you blew all your money on postcards. I did, yeah. And plane tickets to LA. Well, what are you going to do? Get your boat, as my nana would say. Kichibo. Kichibo. What does that mean? In their dialect, it's what do you want? Kichibo attivolio. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's it. Cool. I'm working on new stuff, and I'll have new new music to share when I have it. In the meantime, I'm always puttering, you know, putting around playing shows. There's Pop a benefit in. on the 16th of December or 15th of December. Oh. I'll have the for Collax, the uh, Sexual Assault Resource Center. Oh. I'm playing a show for them in December, and then some regional stuff um, in the new year. But cool. the rest of the time, focusing on the album. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. And so you had a preview at the show. I did. Mm -hmm. I did. I didn't even know. Surprise. Surprise. So you're going to post your stuff when you're in L.A. Like you'll, I like your Instagram. You've always got something going on. I will bombard everybody with, with L.A. I'm curious to see what's going to happen there. Yeah. And, uh, like I did with the U.K., Yes. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, I was yeah. in Venice over there. I feel bad for the locals. That was last year. When was that? April and May. Okay, I lost track of time. Isn't it nuts how fast it goes? Time waits. Time waits. Time waits for no one. I know you don't believe in the afterlife, but I do. I do See how you carry him in your heart and mind like I do Yeah